What's up everyone? I'm here in Twizel now, having driven up from Wanaka yesterday. I've got a couple of jobs up here. One's a photo shoot for Osprey New Zealand. Photographing and videoing a, a ferret survey for them. And I'm also doing an article on the Black Stilt Breeding program for a, a magazine. Yeah. First things though, we introduction. Welcome back. I'm down here at Lake Rotanifa at the moment. Had a few spare hours, so wanted to come down and play around with the video settings on my two DSLR bodies. I've been using DSLRs for a number of years now, and they've all had video capabilities on them, but I've never really used them. Just got into the videoing thing, well, not too long ago, really, and just been doing all the filming on this camera here, which is just a dedicated little video camera, handy cam if you like. The problem with that, it's it's great for filming filming vlog type stuff, but it's only got a 10 power optical zoom. And so you know you can't video game animals or birds very well with it. So I thought I'd explore the settings on these DSLRs. That way I can put the big lens on, on one of them and hopefully get some video of game animals, wildlife, birds, that sort of thing. The dedicated handy cam that I'm filming this on is very limited with what you can do with it as far as manual settings go. You can only really manually adjust one at a time. So if I want to set the shutter speed, everything else, all the ISO, aperture and that, uh, are set automatically so I can only change one at a time which is very limiting whereas a DSLR you know I can I can manually set all the settings if I want which gives you a lot more a lot more range in what you can do so yeah just come down to try a few different settings and maybe get some try out the big lens on the, the bird life on the lake here See how we go. She's all about experimenting and trying things, learning from your mistakes. As I've said before, nothing beats experience and trying things for yourself, I reckon. Geez, we had um, snow on the ground in the motor camp at Twizel this morning. It's about minus two, I think. And I think the Queenstown and Wanaka areas have all had a big dump, so. Yeah, winter's here. See how we go with these video settings. One thing I have learned, I think it's a basic rule with videoing, is if you're running at say 24 frames per second, you should have your shutter speed at double that. So technically it should be 48, the nearest is 1 50th. So that scene there, uh, it's in manual mode, and I've set the shutter speed at 1 50th aperture at f8 and I've left the auto the ISO on auto the theory being that the camera should adjust the ISO for a good exposure but as you can see there it's overexposed quite a bit so the second thing I tried was shutter speed priority whoops where I've where I set the shutter speed at 1 50th and let the camera sort out the aperture and the ISO and here's the result if I just switch it to shutter speed priority and straight away we've got a good looking scene that's properly exposed so I've managed to get a good exposure and at the same time keeping that important 1 50th of a second rule which is double the frame rate which is 24 so I think shutter priority will be the one to use out in the field. Cool. Okay, I'm still in the aperture priority. 
with that 150th for second set and as you can see it's come up with a pretty good exposure but if I if you think it's underexposed or overexposed you can use the exposure compensation dial you see this little graph at the moment I've got it set up so this dial here can can give plus or minus exposure so if I move that over to the right you can see the scene getting brighter it's overexposing it and same for the left going left if you want a darker scene you can dial minus exposure compensation like I say I've said before cameras get things wrong sometimes and you have to manually do a lot yourself so that's a good wee feature bit of bird life on the lake over there I've got the 100-400 lens on that camera there to give you an idea how how, how much uh, that lens pulls those birds in those birds are about 100 to 150 meters away not too bad but we always long for lenses with longer reach my ultimate lens is uh, the Canon 500 f4 only problem there is it costs about 15 or 16 thousand bucks I've just had a look with the binoculars at those birds out there there's um, Australasian coots, swans, grey and mallard duck, welcome swallows, scalp and pied shags so quite a variety out there I know for a fact too there's also southern crested grebes on here so yeah, abundant burnt life, that's for sure. Autumn colours just hanging in there. Here's my pride and joy, the Canon 100-400 Mark II lens. Uh, the, the main lens I use for the wild game and bird life photography really good lens sharp as and the autofocus system on it is really quick and accurate much better than the Mark 1 version which I used to have just on my way back to Twizer I thought I'd stop here at the salmon farm and show you place where they catch all the monstrosity trout the ones that feed up on all the salmon pellets from the farm of course they grow to huge proportions in a very short space of time they're catching 30 and 40 pound fish out of here nowadays okay Just over the road there is one of the popular places where people park up in their camper vans to fish these canals and just over there there is a cafe and a little outlet where they sell the, the salmon. Asian tourists love it. <laughs> Fresh snow on the hills there this morning. Cook in the back there somewhere. Just cold here. Some of you guys might have seen my video oh, a couple of months ago on the, the summer bull tar. I got on to quite good numbers up in the Mount Cook area there. And while I'm up here at the moment, depending on the, the avalanche situation. And the amount of snow I might try and get back up there for a couple of days and see if they're in the same area they'll be rutting at the moment of course so in those magnificent winter coats with the big manes also want to have another crack at the, the black stilts at the head of Lake Pukaki they're always good fun to photograph there's only 90 uh, I think it's 90 wild adult, adult birds left uh, 
Um, that's not counting the ones in the aviary at the breeding program in Twizel there, but um, they're the rarest wading bird in the world. Quite significant really. Yeah. Good stuff. Just hope that snow's not too bad and be able to have a crack at those tar again. If you guys are ever in the Twizel area and you want somewhere to stay, the Rua Tanifa Motor Camp is a great spot. Tony Ritchie, the, the owner here, is a good bugger. Good rates. And just one of those real Kiwi casual motor camps. Good spot. Handy to the Mount Cook area, of course, if you're down here tar hunting. And you want that place to stay overnight before or after a trip. Real handy. Go. We'll see you next time. Cheers.